Hi, Ennis class. Hope you're doing well. Firstly, I just want to say a huge well done to all of you who turned in your work for our last humanities lesson. You did really, really well. So today we are looking at our last lesson for this unit and we're going to be moving on to the Iron Age. So make sure you have a piece of paper and a pencil ready to take notes just like last time. So our learning intention for today is I know why the Iron Age was important. So we're going to be looking through lots of information about the Iron Age and you're going to be making notes about what were the key points or the key areas of the Iron Age that we really need to learn about. And our success criteria for today is to understand what iron is, to know that the Iron Age came after the Bronze Age and to know what hill forts and houses were like during the Iron Age. So the first thing I would like you to do is to answer these questions. Remember, if you don't have a purple pen, that's absolutely fine. You can do this in a different colour. So number one, what is a beaker? Number two, what were the beakers made out of during the Bronze Age? And number three, who were the beaker folk? So I want you to pause the video here and go and answer those questions on your piece of paper. And then I'm going to go through the answers. Okay, so hopefully you found those pretty straightforward and you used your notes from last lesson. So number one, what is a beaker? So we know that a beaker in modern times is used purely for drinking from, but during Bronze Age times, the beaker was often used for storage as well. What were the beakers made out of? So they were made out of bronze, which we know is a combination between um, a combination of tin and copper. And who were the beaker folks? Remember, they were the people that arrived in um, England and they settled very quickly and they actually introduced the beaker to the English people. So give yourself a tick for those answers. And if you need to correct, you can do so now. OK, so now we're going to go through some information about the Iron Age. And I would like you to make notes as we read through the slides and focus, remember, on the key information. So the Iron Age is still in prehistory. Remember, prehistory is a period of time when there were no written records, OK? And it began around 750 BC and lasted for around 800 years in Britain. So that was how long the Iron Age lasted, 800 years. So you can pause the video here just to make some notes about that information. OK, so for this slide, I would like you to write down what you think iron is. Some of you may already know because you've heard of the word before. So have a think about what you think iron is and we will go through the answers in a second. So just pause the video here and have a think. So iron ores are minerals and rocks from which iron can be extracted. And iron was extracted by a process known as smelting, which used a charcoal fired furnace. So the iron would be taken from the rocks and by heating it up, really. And then the iron could be heated and hammered into shape. So remember, iron is a type of metal and it is very strong. And that was why it was used so widely during the Iron Age, because this creation or finding of iron really changed the culture of the time. So pause the video here to make some more notes. So why do you think people used iron so widely after they had discovered bronze, which they actually thought was pretty strong? But they realised that iron is tougher than bronze. It is shaped by being heated to a high temperature and then it's hammered against an anvil. So it's quite a good material to shape in different ways. And the process of this heating and hammering is called smithing. Compared to bronze, iron was considered easier to work with because remember, with bronze, you had to combine two other metals, tin and copper together. Whereas with iron, it was naturally extracted from rock and you didn't have to really combine it with anything else. And it can be shaped into finer and sharper objects like spearheads and swords. And obviously we still use iron today to make swords. So please, can you pause here and make some notes about that? It's really important that you include the word smithing 
in your notes because that is a key word. So make sure you describe what smithing means. OK, so now we're going to look a bit more at the structure of buildings during the Iron Age. So hill forts were first built from around 800 BC and they were defended settlements that made use of natural rises in the landscape for defensive advantage. So basically this means that the settlements or the buildings or the houses were built on hills that were high up so that if any armies were coming to attack, you could be able to see, or the people in, during the Iron Age would be able to see the enemies that were coming. Okay? So between 500 and 100 BC, many parts of Britain were dominated by hill forts with settlements providing homes to hundreds of people. So people were definitely feeling safer living on top of these hills so they could see if there were any people, any armies or any enemies coming to attack. One of the biggest hill forts in Europe was discovered in Maiden Castle, which is a place in Dorset. So a lot of the castles were built up on hills because they could be, again, um, can look out for enemies and can look out for any armies who are coming to attack. So pause the video here to make some more notes. OK, I want you to have a look at these houses and think about what do you notice about these houses? Look at the shape, look at the materials. Are they similar or different to the houses we have today? Just have a think about that. You don't need to write any notes, but just have a think about how they are different to the houses we have today. So we've just got some fun facts for you. You can make some notes on this as you're listening. So these houses are actually called round houses because they are circular in shape. They did not have chimneys, so the smoke from any fires would go through the thatched roof or the hay roof that these circular houses had. Now in the centre of the house there would have been a fire which was used for cooking and if you noticed in the picture there's only really one room that the whole family would be cooking in and sleeping in. Um, but this fire would have been in the middle of that room and would be used as a source of heat and light. And some round houses may have contained ovens which were used for baking bread. The frame of the house was constructed out of large timbers and walls were made from wattle and daub, which is mud and sticks combined together. And it was also animal dung and some clay. Okay, so you've got all your information there about the round houses and how they were made. Obviously, they didn't have much light, um, only fire that was there. You could see it looked quite a dark house as well. OK, so just pause here to make some more notes. OK, so we've got quite a fun task for you today. So I would like you to have a go at sketching a hill fort, an Iron Age home, in your book and label each part of the house. Now, you can do this on your Google Draw if you would like. Um, which Miss Hewer has set up for you. So use the shapes that have been provided on the drawing page to make your house. And if you can label it, that will be even better. OK, so for this last task, I would like you to um, write this down on the Google document that Miss Hewer has put. So I would like you to answer these questions on that document so we can have a read through of your answers. So think about what it would be like to live in a hill fort and Iron Age house. Why do you think people in the Iron Age lived on those hill forts? Think about what we talked about and have a think about whether you would like to live in those kind of houses. Would you have liked to live in just one room with all of your family? And think about the comparison between the houses we have now and the houses that were there then. I really look forward to seeing all of your work. Try your best and if you have any questions you can just type them into our live stream on Google Classroom and I will be able to answer your questions along with Mithua. Okay, thank you very much. See you later.